Hello. Welcome to Getting Started with Scrivener, Part 2, Setting Up Your Scrivener Project Using My Non-Fiction Templates. I am Vanessa Keir. In the previous two videos, I talked about setting up your Scrivener project using the blank template and using the fiction templates. In this video, I'll talk you through setting up your project using the general nonfiction template and then take a look at one of the specialized nonfiction templates. So let's go into Scrivener and see what these look like. If you're writing nonfiction, there are several different formats here. I'm not going to go into all of these. I'm just going to walk you through what is in the general nonfiction template. So again, you've got your instruction document at the top. You have a manuscript folder. Then for nonfiction, it's added a document for your forward if you have one. And then it has a chapter, but instead of calling it a scene, it calls it a section. Then you have your front matter. And in this case, in addition to the title page for manuscript, it also has a contents page. You've got your paperback, your ebook, and there's also this new folder, back matter, with endnotes for manuscript format and notes for the paperback format. And there's also a new folder down here under notes called ideas. And then you have one sample non-fiction manuscript format and you can see this is what the contents would look like in the forward etc. All right now that we've seen what the general non-fiction template looks like let's go out and take a look at one of the specialized templates. I'm not going to go through every single one of these non-fiction templates. If you're writing non-fiction it's a good idea to just explore them but let's take a look at one more Let's take a look at this paper APA and see what kind of formatting comes with that. All right, so as you can see from the about document here, this is a very specific format that applies to papers being submitted to the American Psychological Association. So as with all the templates, it says down here, you don't have to worry about the font or the formatting because all the appropriate formatting will be done during compile. And something else you'll notice, just like with the blank template, there's only the binder on the left and this editor window. The inspector on the right is being hidden with this template. However, if you do decide that you want to see the inspector, all you have to do is go up to this inspector icon on the right side of the toolbar and click it and it will reveal the inspector. And then you would just click off. A couple of other things to notice. You have your manuscript folder has been renamed as paper. You have several different sub documents in here. You have this main content, which instead of having a regular document icon or a folder icon has this kind of, you can see it better if it's not highlighted, but it has this kind of notebook icon. If you're ever unsure as to whether a document is a folder, or is a text, like a regular document, you can always go up to Documents, Convert, and then here it says to File. So that means that this main content is acting as a folder. If I went down to this Participants, and I did the same thing, Documents, Convert, you can see that I could convert it to a folder. So this main content is a folder, and then underneath it, this is a document. And the reason I can tell that is that there's this double text icon, and that means it's a document, but it has subdocuments. So you can see that it has these four subdocuments, and then these results and discussion are at the same level of hierarchy as the method. In a professional paper such as this, references are a big deal. So there's a note here about how to check the guidelines before you use whatever is already preset in Scrivener, just in case your institution has its own guidelines, but they've gone ahead and basically done the foundation work for you. Footnotes, there's also a, an example here of how your footnotes will be. Then you have your appendices, and again, they've played around with the icon. Um, 
These are all icons that are part of the standard set that come with Scrivener. And then under research, as with the other templates, there's a PDF of how this will look on compile. So you can see how the formatting will look. And you can scroll down to see what the reference is and the footnotes and the appendix will look like. And again, there's a notes folder and an ideas folder. So that's going to conclude my brief video on how to use the nonfiction templates. Again, take a look at the templates offered and see if there's any that meet your specifications. But as I mentioned in the first video on the blank template, if you're just doing nonfiction, which is blog posts, you might just want to keep all of your blog posts in a blank um, template that you set up with whatever organizational system you use to keep your blog posts straight, whether it's organizing them by date or by topic, because some of these um, nonfiction ones are very specific to a, a type of submission. So in the next video, I will go over the basic script writing template. Until then, happy writing. Bye.